You're saying in your notes that actually pulling out from Russia is an investment in security and the future of democracy. Tell us how Ukraine is paying the price in order to fight for this ideal. Look, uh, when we talk about the current situation around the war in Russia, we all must understand that this is not an event of some small scale somewhere and it will end uh, fast. This is an event of huge scale. It will have consequences throughout the world and it will be felt definitely here in Asia. When we talk about business with Russia, you must always distinguish your desire to get a lot of money rather than to maintain a proper face of your company, because Russia is not actually a big market. I saw recent estimates in uh, Japanese press that if even uh, Japan will cut almost all economic projects with Russia, that probably will affect 0.25 percent of Japan's GDP. Because Russia is not huge. It's huge by territory, but it is not huge from economic point of view. And of course, we cut business with Russia too. And we very much appreciate the response of the Japanese government, which is unprecedented. And we think mm. that it's the right thing to do to withdraw from the country, which is run by authoritarian regime. What conversations are you having right now with the Japanese government, and what more do you want to see? We, we have very comprehensive uh, discussions. I met with already almost every minister who is responsible, for, somehow may have responsibility uh, in this situation, and we found a complete support. I would like to say that those already, already we count four ways of sanctions, they are unprecedented, and they are very important to close loopholes in Asia, which Russia can use to avoid sanctions imposed by European Union and United States. And that's what we see, full cooperation. We are now talking about additional support. We are talking about refugees coming to Japan, because Japan opened its, its borders to Ukrainians who, who wish uh, to come to Japan and stay here as refugees. We are talking about additional uh, efforts to withdraw the uh, rest of the companies. There are some still doing business in Russia. Uh, uh, we, we are talking to them, trying to persuade them to, uh, right, to do the right thing in these circumstances. Ambassador, we're also hearing reports that uh, Moscow has asked Beijing for military aid, for military equipment. What do you make of this request? How do you think Beijing will navigate this, given the image of, I guess, carefully cultivated neutrality that they've been putting forth so far? Uh, this is the key question of the current situation, I would say. Being here in Asia, it is abundantly clear that position of China is immensely important. I do think that Putin set a trap for, for China, uh, uh, signing this uh, huge declaration on February 4. On February 4, he already knew that he will invade Ukraine. And he already knew that bringing this visibility of China as supporter of Russia uh, would have toxic consequences sequences for Chinese image and for Chinese economy because of ways of sanctions. I do hope that uh, China will be smart enough to understand very carefully and to estimate very carefully consequences of these toxic relations with Putin, because China is much bigger and much smarter uh, than Putin is. They have no reason to maintain uh, to, or to support war in Europe. Because, you know, Europe was a destination of one belt, one road project. And this project goes nowhere. All investment, all efforts to build new trade routes from China to Europe, they just disappeared. So they just uh, go to the basket. I mean, because of the uh, deeds of uh, Putin. And guess if Putin will use nuclear weapons as he, as he threatened us, or if he would blow out nuclear power plants, there will be no Europe. I mean, there will be consequences much wider than uh, Ukraine. That's what I'm saying constantly. What happens in Ukraine will not stay in Ukraine. What happens in Europe will not stay in Europe. And China must be very carefully consider those requests from, from Russia. It's a shame what Putin is doing, and this is very toxic relations. So we just need to uh, wait and see. We don't know that China is very now very carefully uh, considers what is going on around Ukraine. How difficult is it, do you think, for Japan to balance what it has been 
taking as a traditional pacifist stance. Like he has sent some equipment to Ukraine, which I think surprised some analysts. Do you think that they could be doing more? Do you think that corporate Japan should be doing more, given that they have, compared to perhaps uh, the corporate response in other economies, lagged? Uh, as I said, this uh, support we have from the uh, government of Japan is absolutely unprecedented. What we saw uh, for the first time probably in history, then Japan supplied us with uh, uh, non-lethal equipment, protective equipment, uh, and uh, for, uh, for our military. Uh, and that was a very important for us because uh, this is this is a sign of full understanding of what is going on. We know uh, and we very much uh, 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 follow the regulations in the Japanese law and of course the peace, uh, uh, peaceful con uh, constitution uh, which uh, which forbids Japan to be part of any military conflicts. We fully respect that. So uh, at the same time, we do appreciate efforts of the government to be a part of G7 efforts, of international community efforts, and to do utmost uh, possible to stop uh, these uh, atrocities and to maintain the sanctioned regime against Russia. So uh, we uh, do hope uh, we will continue uh, looking into those loopholes which are still left. Uh, it's always a very immense uh, massive of data you have to evaluate and to understand consequences for your own country uh, because you know this is clearly a time when we just went out of two years of covid mm. everyone in the region needs uh, revival uh, and this war is very very uh, complicated uh, or everything right we actually heard last week from your colleague, the ambassador to South Korea, Ambassador Ponomarenko, and he was telling us that he believes that Beijing knows the consequences of this war in Ukraine for its own country as well. What sort of change do you want to see in China policy towards Ukraine? I think, uh, final, you know, this is a moment of truth. A moment of choice. You have to understand very carefully. I mean, Chinese authorities must understand. Uh, this is an event of huge scale, and will, it will have consequences, and uh, which reverberates for years, if not decades. Uh, Russia uh, went back in hundred years in their economy, and those sanctions will not end even if uh, the active phase, phase of war will stop. So uh, China must understand that even if they have uh, uh, very tough discussions with the West, with the United States, uh, the, uh, the, the consequences of supporting Putin, that's much more pricely, uh, and they, uh, the price will be higher. Uh, so I expect that China will, uh, uh, will uh, take a proper position, so they should name a spade a spade, a war a war. They may uh, mm. uh, uh, distance themselves from oh. Putin and definitely not even think to support him because that will be a huge blow to the image of China.